Meg Kamaro, thank you very, very much for joining me this morning, uh, giving us your time and sharing your story and your journey with us. Um, you from I, uh, Flying Ag Australia, that's your business, and you've done some quite amazing things um, in your entrepreneurial journey. And I think um, we're very keen to know more about you, your business, and also those critical points along this journey. And that's what you know, this interview is all about this morning. So before we, uh, you know, ask you a few other questions to kind of, um, uh, you know, more some specific points about your journey, tell me a little bit more about yourself um, and also your business. Sure. Thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of this program. Uh, so I grew up on a cattle property in the central Burnet, um, which was it was an awesome upbringing, uh, being you know living on the land. I, I attended the Dolby Agricultural College where I met my husband, and we um, came back to the family farm and were cotton growers for quite a number of years. Uh, four years ago, my husband's parents decided to sell the farm, and so we had to look elsewhere um, for for income to to support our family. And uh, 12 months ago, a bit over 12 months ago now, this opportunity came up um, as a part of the Australian Summer Grains Conference for us to take on Flying Ag Australia. And my love of technology, I'm one of these people who, um, uh, who, who lines up at, tel at the Telstra shop on Apple release day. <laughs> uh, and as well as my passion for agriculture, I've I've worked in agriculture for my whole life apart from two months where I worked in another industry and hated every moment of it. Uh, so agriculture is definitely my place to be. So to combine those two things into the one business um, was, was really ideal. So it's, it's been a, an interesting journey so far. It, you know, it's you know, meant to be a side gig, which off a side gig, and now I've got another side gig as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a really great journey and I've really enjoyed learning about the starting up a, a business from scratch so in this whole entrepreneurial space how do you see yourself do you see yourself as an entrepreneur um, or you know how do you identify within this whole entrepreneurial uh, area I guess you know in a way yes I do see myself as an entrepreneur I, I worked for a, uh, a local feedlot for quite a number of years at, before we had our family and during that time, I started my own business uh, doing admin type work for uh, for industry organisations, which at, its, at the time, I mean, we were just starting to come into this virtual world. So that in itself was quite quite different and, and I guess entrepreneurial yeah. going on. Um, and then taking on, we, that I continued and I still do work in that business uh, and then taking on this role with Flying Ag was, again, a, another jump. I mean, the drone industry is still in its in, in its infancy stage, particularly when it comes to agriculture and what we can do. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I do um, look at myself as a little bit of an entrepreneur. But I mean, then I look at all the people who are doing amazing things, like the Elon Musk's of the world, who really is an entrepreneur. And I think, yeah, I'm just a girl from the farm, but I need to get myself out of that mindset and say, no, look, you know, own what you're doing and and yeah, and say that's what you actually are. Absolutely. Uh, I guess um, in looking back when you started, ha like how did that, um, you know, the idea came about that, hey, this could be something really good? Yeah, sure. So I was involved in the organisation um, on the committee with the Australian Summer Grains Conference, yeah. um, which happened in March in March last year. And part of that was we um, in we invited a drone and ag technology from the US to speak at the conference and I, I knew that drones were going to be a pretty popular topic of conversation. I tried to get some of the local drone resellers to come along and sell at the conference and they were not interested in dealing with agriculture at all which mm -hmm. I found really surprising and I was really disappointed because I I, I know what farmers are like. Um, they're, they're pretty willing to get out and try a new idea and I think I said in frustration to this this chap that we had come over, Chad Colby, I said, maybe I should go into selling drones. This is really frustrating. Yeah. And, uh, yes, and he said, well, yeah, maybe you should. And um, it all came about from that. So we now work with Flying Ag in the US um, and uh, Flying Ag Australia. 
So it sounds to me like, you know, you obviously looked ahead and you could see an opportunity. Have you always been inclined to kind of see opportunities and see things out in the future? Hey, that may be a good thing to chase. Um, uh, perhaps, I mean, I mean, with my other business, I mean, that was, uh, you know, really early stages of the virtual world. So, mm. yeah, I think, you know, I, I did see an opportunity that, that there was no one really out in the ag space providing these types of services. And then, yeah, to see, we knew that the drone industry was only new. I mean, I hadn't even flown until March last year. We could really see the potential for that as a business. So, yeah, perhaps I have. I mean, it's not something that I've had really thought of until you've just asked me. So, <laughs> so um, what would you say is your favourite um, part of being an entrepreneur? For me, with a young family, I have an eight-year-old daughter and a five-year-old daughter. For me, it's the flexibility of not having a nine-to-five job, uh, particularly when you live out of town. So, you know, we, we don't live a long way from town compared to some people further out west, but still, I mean, it's 40 minutes to our local town, uh, you know, 20 minutes to the school. So it just gives me the flexibility to be there for my children uh, and support what they do as well as giving me an outlet uh, to, to work. I mean, I really enjoy working and in particular working with farmers. So it gives me an out, an outlet to, um, to do what I love. So in your journey, you know, I think it's very characteristic of um, entrepreneurs to start their journey and then they come across these, uh, I guess, barriers and things that, uh, unexpected things that, that just kind of put them, set them back a bit. Um, has there been any of those setbacks um, or maybe one particular one that you can think about that you thought this is quite difficult to navigate? Uh, not as yet. I mean, it, we're still on the early days. Yeah. In 12 months. So it's not, yeah, I haven't come across anything. I mean, and if I was, if I was, you know, I just have to, you just have to keep on plodding through. Like if you have a difficult difficult issue then you just got to keep on just bite a little bit off at the t at a time and just keep on going until until you get through so you you're also saying that you've got another side gig did you say uh, what's that about well for me um because i'm you know i'm selling drones uh it's not something that i'm terribly comfortable with and i look at um what's happening on social media and there's a lot of social selling going on i mean whether that's wellness products or skincare products and I thought you know these people really know how to sell I mean they that is one of their key strengths and I thought maybe I can learn something by getting involved in something like this um to um to to increase my skills for for my flying ag business so I I signed up as a consultant for a skincare company that's coming into Australia so um, when that starts, I'm really looking forward to learning more about the selling side of things um, because that's somewhere that I, I feel that I'm lacking at the moment. Yeah, and certainly the selling side of things. Without selling, selling, there's no business, basically. So, yeah, sounds to me a very, very good strategy because that's a strategy you can take across whatever business you're involved in. Um, so, Mick, what would you say are the kind of skills that you have found that's worked really well for you and also that you'd like to share with other women out there about your views on what are the entrepreneurial skills that's really important for women to be successful? Yeah, certainly. So the first would be determination to keep moving forward. I mean, even if it's just, you know, if you do one act per day that um, that helps your business, you just, there needs to be, you need to continue actioning um, things to keep you, business rolling uh, the second would be uh, faith in yourself so I find it particularly for me uh, self-doubt is something that I battle with on a daily hourly basis so just um, yeah just keep keep on reminding yourself that you, you're doing the right thing um, and that, that you know just be brave for one more minute or you know one more hour just to get through what you're working on the other one would be belief in your idea so believing that what the product or the service that you're providing really is of value to your potential clients. Uh, I think there are the three main uh, skills or things that I believe that you need to, to keep yourself rolling forward.
Um, so Meg, who would you admire as a successful entrepreneur, or maybe not necessarily entrepreneur, but somebody out there that you think, wow, that's pretty great? Yeah, I try not to tie myself down to um, to one person or one organisation because I think there's a whole lot of organisations out there that have both good ideas and you don't always agree with the other things that they're saying. Mm. Um, I mean, Elon Musk and, and tel uh, Tesla, I mean, they're doing some really fabulous things. Um, there's also, um, you know, lots of local people, I mean, the people at Canvas Coworking, I think um, I look at what they're providing our local community uh, and it's it's really great. So I, I just, I try to, um, you know, look at mul um, multiple organisations and just pick out the, the bits that suit my business. And I guess you mentioned, um, uh, you know, the fact you don't just look at one one particular person, but um, what why would why would you admire um, someone? What, yeah, what would be the characteristics that you think is really quite cool? Yeah, um, probably tenacity and um, courage, you know, being bold. I mean, not not letting self-doubt uh, rule their life, for me, is a really big thing. So, I mean, another person would be Dr. Catherine Ball. I mean, she's quite well-known in the drone industry, particularly here in Australia, and she has this confidence that um, I wish a lot of it would rub off on me. <laughs> yeah. So um, she, yeah, she's one person. So yeah, tenacity and um, overcoming self doubt, being you know, owning what you do. Now, if you if you can think a little bit about your journey, but also um, you know you obviously want to learn and you learn constantly from others. Um, do you think there's a kind of a, a sort of pattern or formula to become a successful entrepreneur? And and uh, what would that be if you you know just want to hear your views on that? Um, I'm. For me personally, I don't think that there's a formula for being um, an entrepreneur. I think the biggest thing is you, you just need to keep at it. Um, I think that's the for me that's the number one thing. I mean, if uh, and you know, there's always going to be tough times, but if you if you stick with it, um, I think that eventually you'll see success. And there's not many overnight successes. There's not there's not many unicorns of the. Uh, entrepreneurial world like they're very few and far between but we all have our own personal successes and I think that's important is just to keep going. So Meg what kind of strategies have worked for you really well you selling drones um, in this tech area um, can you maybe share some of the strategies that's really worked well for you? Yeah sure so uh, for me I mean working with farmers one you know they like to um, I like to touch and feel things. I like to have somebody to talk to. That's what's worked well for me is being someone that they can rely on and call if they have any questions uh, is, is a big thing. It, it also sounds to me you've kind of embraced the virtual world. So what kind of um, virtual or online strategies have you found worked really well for you? Yeah, sure. So Facebook um, and Twitter, I do quite a lot on that. Um, I'm just starting up a Facebook page for uh, the use of farm drones in Australia to try and bring a collective or a collective knowledge uh, for to Australian farmers. What about um, partnerships? Um, you mentioned you've got a partner, you know, in, in America. So obviously um, that's part of the business kind of structure that you, you're running. Um, I guess I'd like your views on that and, you know, for others that may want to, you know, become part of a partnership, what are the kind of things that you you think um, they need to look out for, um, how important it is, etc. Yeah, sure. Um, when, when looking for a partner, it's really important to, to feel your way through as to whether or not you're going to be able to work with them if they're the kind of people that you align with. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's really important because if if there's if you just have a niggling feeling that things aren't right, then that there's always going to be an, an edge to to the partnership. So yeah, I think it's really important to get to know them and see if you can you know become friends and work with them uh, in a smooth manner. What about the formal side of things? Do you think it's important to get formal arrangements in place? I do. I think for protection of both, because some things, sometimes things just happen um, untoward that you that neither parties uh, 
are prepared for. And so I think it is really important to have some formal procedures um, or agreements in, in place prior. And uh, I guess still on the topic of partnerships, um, do you feel that you can do a lot more when you're in partnership than when you're just a solopreneur? I think so. Um, I think it gives you somebody, particularly for me, you know, living um, not remotely, but, you know, working at mm. home myself, it gives me some, some people to bounce ideas off, um, someone to talk to and someone who understands what you're going through because they're going through the same thing essentially as well. Yeah. And I guess I also want to explore a little bit about your views on mentorship um, and uh, whether you see, think that's quite essential in uh, unfolding an entrepreneurial journey. It sure is. Mentorship is really, really important. Um, it's good to have somebody, like I said, with partners, it's good to have somebody to bounce ideas off and particularly someone who's been through the process before. Uh, I think it's really beneficial um, and it just gives you a little bit of peace of mind that, you know, and a bit of, you know, an, an outside view into your business and into how you're running. Uh, I think it's, I think it's great. I think mentorship is really, really important for, particularly for rural women. Have you had some really good mentors in your, um, I guess, in your whole entrepreneurial journey? Yeah, I've been really, really lucky um, since I started my first business that I've had some really great mentors. Um, they've been, you know, other women in particular who have been running a similar journey to myself. So I've always looked up to them and, um, you know, it, they've been great in, in always being there to answer my questions. Uh, Meg, what is the, um, I guess, biggest overall lesson that you have learned uh, in your entrepreneurial journey that you'd like to share with other women out there? Yeah, look, my, the biggest thing I'd like to share is if you have an idea, go for it. Um, don't, be, don't be afraid of what people will think um, and, and just, just, keep, just keep rolling with it, keep going. Uh, you will get there in the end. <laughs> Now, you're doing some really amazing things at the moment, especially for women. Um, you know, it's not, I guess there's still a huge underrepresentation of women in the tech field, you know, so you certainly exploring that side of it. Uh, that side of it. Um, but I guess looking forward, is there one amazing thing that you still want to achieve uh, in the future and that you, you really kind of, at this stage, even working towards? Yeah, um, for me, uh, a lot of my work in the past has been in industry representation. So I would really like to see a lot more women using a drone on their farm to share their farm story. So uh, I think that's something that I might have to work on, um, you know, perhaps creating a Facebook group or something for support to get women to share their farm story and even their entrepreneurial stories through drones. Uh, that sounds absolutely fascinating to me. I think, you know, I mean, I'm not a drone expert, but when you say something like that, I can just kind of see the drones and the, the, the exponential opportunities around it. That you, we, we don't even think about at the moment. So you're certainly in an area where I think there's a lot of possibilities going, going forward. Um, Meg, where can we find you online? And if other women want to connect with you, how can they contact you? Where can they contact you? Yes, I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, we have a website, flyingag.com.au, uh, Facebook, we're Flying Ag Australia, Twitter, Flying Ag Australia, Instagram, Flying Ag Australia, uh, and you can find me personally um, across all of those channels as well, Meg Cumro or Meg DK. So, Meg, if there, is there anything else that you, um, you know, before we say goodbye, um, you know, do you want to share with other women and also maybe just comment on the aspect of teams? Yeah. Um, I, I would say to other women um, looking at starting the, their entrepreneurial journey is don't be afraid to reach out to the likes of myself or other people who have been on this journey and who are currently on this journey and even people who are starting on the journey. I think it's really important that uh, we all give each other support um, because it can be, it, particularly when you live remotely, it can be a really lonely place to be starting out your own business so don't be afraid to reach out and um and ask for help in regards to teams i think um teams are really really important there's a lot of focus on the individual at the moment and individual learning but i think um team learning and working as a team 
is increasingly important. So it's something that um, it is hard when you're on when you're a solo entrepreneur to have a team, particularly when you're in a small business that doesn't have the funds to have a, a, a full blind team. Uh, but yeah, look at look at other entrepreneurial women as your team, um, and and build you know try and work on building each other up and and, and learning as a group. Uh, Mick, thank you very, very much for your time this morning. Uh, all your wonderful golden nuggets <laughs> that we're going to pull out of this interview into other formats as well. And yeah, looking really forward to connect with you in the future again. Yeah, great. Thank you so much for the opportunity.